Right, this is part two of our ventilation series. Now, we heard last time about the problems when we go into our winter months and why that will be really problematic if you don't get ventilation in your cavities. So let's look at the roof because that's what we're concerned with is the problems in the roof attic area. Now, what happens in the winter months is that usually at night, it's colder outside than it is inside the house, which means that your roof cavity gets a lot colder than your living area because you would normally heat your living area up. And there's no reason to heat up the roof cavity because you don't actually live there, right? So the living area is warm and the roof attic gets cold. And what happens during nighttime? Well, when it gets dark, the occupants of the home come back in. They have dinner and they take showers and they go to bed, right? And all these activities generate heat. And not only that, they generate steam. Now you will be amazed how much steam we actually generate when we breathe. So in the winter time, when you blow out, you can see clouds of steam. Well, it's literally hot air condensing back into water. And because moist air is less dense than the cooler air, it'll rise up to the ceiling and find any holes up there in your ceiling and try to escape. You would say, there's no holes in my ceiling. How can this hot air escape? Well, you'd be quite surprised. You have lights, right? And in order for you to have lights, you've got to cut a hole in the ceiling. Now, most of these holes you can't see because they're behind the light fitting. But it's amazing how much air will go up to the light fitting and then escape around the perimeter of the hole and then rise and go into the roof cavity. So you have warm, moist air going through all these little nooks and crannies going up into your roof cavity. And it's a little bit inefficient because you're losing warmth into the cold attic, right? But that's not the thing you should be worried about. What you should be worried about is that now you have warm, moist air in a cold attic. And when it hits the surface of anything that's cold, you get condensation. And this is made worse when a lot of the old house bills had extractor fans in the bathroom. You gotta get rid of all the moist air in the shower, right? So it goes up into the attic space and it spreads out so that you get all this warm moist air in the huge attic space. And most of the moisture stays there, right? So as a result, you get a really moist attic. And a moist attic means that a lot of things like to grow in there, the things you don't want to grow, right? And this is when you want your roof ventilation to work. Not in the daytime, but at night. So you want something that's preferably passive, Passive meaning that you don't need to put any energy towards it. So it's not a fan, it's not mechanically ventilated. Uh, it's something that happens because it's using the physics of hot and cold air and how they move to create a ventilation stream of air through your cavity. And that's what roof ventilation is all about. And the important thing to realize here is that you want to limit the amount of warm, moist air escaping your living area into the attic space. And if you don't have sufficient inlets outside your living space to let air in, then what would happen is that you would suck a lot more air out of your living space into your roof attic area. And that's the reason why the National Construction Code demands that you put a lot of air intakes outside the home and ventilate the cavity in order to have a cooling effect and also a drying effect. Now, just like you can wave a fan in a 40 degree heat and actually feel a lot cooler, or you can wave a fan when you are in a five degree winter and you still feel cool, this means that there is evaporation happening when you get air movement. So the fact that in the winter time, you're still drawing air through your cavity means that whatever moisture in there has a chance to evaporate and you may say that well that makes my attic space a lot colder then doesn't it 
Well, it doesn't really matter because that's not the important thing. Because the important thing is getting rid of the moisture. That's what it's all about, is that if your house and your cavities stay dry, then you don't have the leaking building syndrome or the so-called sick building syndrome. And your house will last longer and you live in it a lot more comfortably. Now, I'll finish off this video where a lack of ventilation in the roof cavity has caused a leaking building syndrome. And what happened is that we had a look at this house, a skillion roof, it had a metal skillion roof, and there were mole areas happening everywhere. Now, we looked at the roof, it's a relatively new metal roof, and there's no way that the roof itself could be leaking, right? And this is when we didn't know a lot about condensation and the problems with condensation. Now, we lifted the roof off to confirm that the roof wasn't leaking, but there certainly, everything was wet under the roof. And when you looked at the underside of the roof, you had moisture there, and you also had the ceiling insulation that stuck to the underside of the roof sheeting, meaning that there's been moisture in there, and that's what's caused that to happen. And this is one of the most dramatic examples that I've come across. And I asked myself, how can we get so much moisture up into the roof cavity from a room that has little connection to do with the cavity? There's a couple of light fittings, but then I spied the vent in the wall. And it's just a normal air vent. And when I considered that in more detail, I figured that it was a skillion roof, so it was built off the old brick building. So the brick wall, the rear brick wall, had the vents in it. So the skillion roof was built above it. And what happens is that all the warm, moist air in the winter time, it went through the wall vent. And then it went into the wall cavity, went up, it hit the underside of the cold metal roof sheeting and condensation formed. And condensation then dripped onto the ceiling. And over time it worked itself into the plasterboard and it actually developed cracks in the plasterboard. So it was damp on top and it started to get damp underneath and then the mold started. And the other reason why this was one of the worst examples of condensation on the metal roof I've seen is because they laid the metal roof without any anti-condensation blanket. Because if they had an anti-condensation blanket under the metal roof, then the warm air would have just hit the underside of the foil, which is relatively warm, and it wouldn't have caused that much condensation. There would, might have been a little bit, but not enough to cause the amount of damage that we actually saw in this particular home. So there you are, an example of how warm, moist air can find any inlet into the roof cavity and then cause condensation in the cavity and give you a leaky building syndrome. And not a nice home to live in. Now, in the next video, we'll look at more examples of the evils of condensation in the roof cavity and ways that we can eliminate condensation. And a lot of it is to do with complying with the new code, but we need to know the best way that we can do this. So see you in the next video.